Okay, we're continuing with module 20. So here it has introduction to solving radical expressions. Now, you have to be careful. When you're doing cube roots, you don't have to worry about the signs of your answers. But when you're doing squares or square root problems, you do have to um, check your answers. Okay, so here, if I want to get rid of a square root, I would apply the square exponent. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So here, those would cancel each other out, and 4 squared is 16. Now, if I go in to check my answer, I would plug in 16 for y and see if that equals 4. Well, they have given me a positive square root. So when I take the square root of this 16, I do get positive 4. And so these are equivalent, which means this is my answer. Okay, now for the next problem though, to get rid of the root, I would have to square both sides just like I did on the other side. Uh, and so that would make the root cancel. Here, negative 5 squared means negative 5 times another negative 5, which actually gives me positive 25. But when I go to try to check that response, um, I would plug in 25 for V. But remember, this is a positive root, so when I take the square root, I'm only going to get the positive 5. And these two are not equivalent, which means V cannot equal 25. So I did get an answer, but it's one of those extraneous solutions, right? It doesn't actually check out. So in this case, the one answer I got didn't work, so my response here would be no solution. So same thing for these problems when they're a little bit more complex. We will solve them the same, but we will have to check our answers, okay? So before you can square both sides, you need to isolate that radical, which means I need to get rid of this 4 first. So I'm going to have this on my next line, then I can apply the square so I can take this and square this side and square that side. And get 36 and then I can finish solving for V and I get 27 so then I have to check my answers so I'm gonna plug in 27 into the original problem So remember, you have the positive root, so you only get the positive answer, which is 6. That actually gives me positive 2, and those are equivalent. So this is the final answer. Let's try another one. A few more, right? So same thing. This square root is already by itself, so I can go ahead and just square both sides. So I'll get 25 equal to 1 minus 4u. I will continue. Oops. So then let's try to plug that back in. So we have 5 equal to 1 minus 4 times negative 6. 1 plus 24, square root of 25. It is a positive root, so you get positive 5. So these are equivalent. So this is the answer. Now, let's go over here. I do have to isolate the root, or I can square. That gives me negative 1, but now I can square to get rid of the square root. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And then let's check our answer. So we have 4 times negative 1 plus 5 plus 4 equal to 3. So that becomes negative 4 plus 5 plus 4 equal to 3. 
square root of 1, which is just 1, and I get 5, which is not equal to 3. So w is not going to equal negative 1. I got one answer. It doesn't work. So the response I should put in the Alex is no solution. Okay, let's keep going here. It's the same thing, except now we don't have these things equal to numbers. Now they're throwing in some variables. But the process is still the same. The square root is already isolated, so I can square each side of the problem. I just end up with y squared equal to 12y minus 27. And anytime you have a squared equation, you have to get everything to one side. So this is going to become minus 12y as it travels over the equal sign and that will become positive 27 as that term travels over the equal sign. I would try to factor this or um, you can use your quadratic formula but I believe this one should be able to factor. So y minus 7 and y minus or no 9 and 3 Right, those multiply to give me 27 and combine to give me negative 12. So then y would equal 9 and y would equal 3. Now you do have to check both of those answers. So let me check 9 first. And 9 does check out. So 9 is good. 9 will definitely be an answer. Now let's try 3. And remember, 1 could work, both could work, or neither one can work. It just depends on the problem. And this one works as well. So both are part of my answer. So in the computer, they like you to separate the answers with the comma. And so that would be your solution. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you couldn't see that in the video. So you have two solutions here um, for this one problem. Since both of them checked out. Let's try one more example and then we'll cut this for the rest for another video. So same thing here, I have the square root already isolated, so I can square both sides to eliminate it. This becomes y squared, this becomes y plus 30. I do have a square in my equation, so now I want to get everything over to one, term, one side. So in order for these two terms to travel over that equal sign, I'm going to have to minus the y over and minus the 30 over. So you end up with this. And when I factor this, I get y equal to 6 and y equal to 5. And I do have to check both of those answers. So here we will get 36 and a positive square root of 36 is 6, so that one works. Here we get 25 and the positive square root of 25 is 5. These are not equivalent. So y equal to negative 5 will not check out. Therefore, the only answer we have in this problem is 6.